all right welcome to another aqa a level chemistry video today i'm going to be doing a video on calm chromatography so uh as I said, i'm going to be doing so i've decided now that if i want to do these more straightforward videos which this video is going to be a more straightforward video for straightforward videos they're just going to be um as they are here screen recordings it's much easier for me to record for me to send to you and they don't require too much effort so I've, and it's much easier for me to uh edit and i don't have to really edit but i can just send it straight away uh, but yeah, this is going to be a quite straightforward video. Um, tell me if you like this approach of me doing it like a screen recording or if you prefer the other method, the other way I record with me doing the hand gestures, me recording my iPad that way. Um, but yeah, I feel like for a, for a short video, I think this is better. But yeah, but I'll, go, I'll go straight into the video. The, uh, column chromatography. Um, now, this you don't. it's quite a straightforward topic in the sense that you don't have to know an extreme amount. As long as you know... First of all, you have, as long as you have a good ground understanding of chromatography by having a uh, a stationary phase uh being able to separate and isolate and identify compounds by uh uh by understanding the compounds the, the sorry by understanding how different compounds within that mixture have different affinities to mobile and the stationary phase it's the same principle as TLC the same ideas or themes with, with TLC chromatography but the equipment and the method for this type of chromatography is a bit different uh but you don't need to know too much for my for what I remember you don't need to remember too much about how this of the steps of column chromatography uh if I'm wrong about that that's fine I've still got an example of, of which explains uh how column chromatography is it's very very easy to do uh I'll try to make this video as short as I can without talking too much about it but overall this is a topic that you should be scared too much about you need to understand is how the what the mobile it's mobile state mobile phase is the stationary phase uh eluent and el eluate uh, and what they are and uh, it should be it should be a quite straightforward video so so column chromatography is one of the most commonly used methods for separating substances so this is a kind of like a halfway uh version of column chromatography so this would be like halfway through the process as you see here, we've got a little eluate here, conical flask collecting the first uh, fraction, really, of our substance. I've got a bit about this later, but I kind of want to go explain the experiment set up first. So, a gas column, which is usually going to be your burette, is packed with a solid support, normally silica. Uh, the, set, the sample mixture is added above this in the column, which is our eluent. Uh, and and they will be on so once basically we have this first you have uh this element is added this is so we have our first of all you have your your uh, stationary phase in your in your purette uh some you probably have some sort of foam here or uh glass beads here uh and that prevents your your stationary phase from just pouring out but you have a stationary phase here I probably get this is a better example stationary phase here. And your eluent or your your loaded sample uh here which is should i don't know why it's there but it'll be here and then you have a tap of some sorts here and then once you've done that you load your mobile face which was going to go on, onto here on organic and an organic solvent is added which moves the which helps to move the sample down the solid support and through the column so then you add your mobile phase which helps the loaded sample sorry i forget that i'm not that i'm not um I just forget that I'm not I'm not using um that you can't see my hands. So I I completely forget. I'm just saying here and here, but you'd have no idea what I'm talking about. So um I'll go through that one again. I've completely forgot that you can't see my hands. Um something I have to just get used to. But uh so the first thing you do, I can't go back in it. So the first thing you do is you have your uh your burette here, this little thing here. Well, it's not big, but you know what burette is for if you've done uh, titrations, you should know what burette is. You load that up, you then load in your stationary phase here. Then you add your loaded sample, so you, you load your sample in. And once you've done that now, uh, the minute you, you then have, you then add your, your mobile phase in. Now, the moment you add your mobile phase is when you start the clock. Now remember we're timing this because that's how we measure. It's not like with um with um TLC chromatography where we're measuring the distance and we use that to work out the RF. No, 
This is called measuring how fast each compound, once it separates out from the sample, how fast it, how long it takes for it to fully uh, elute out of the uh, burette column and into a conical flask. But how long it takes for all of it to, all of it to uh, leave out. So I still I can I'm I'm so used to. Um, I'm so used to people seeing my hands. They can see my hand gestures. I, I realise now what that's something I have to get used to now. Um, but no problem. But anyway, it's still, so as soon as you add your mobile phase, you start the timer and then your sample will start to separate into its different compounds from the mobile phase. Because when the organic solvent uh, is added, which moves the sample down the solid support and through the column. Because obviously your sample will have some sort, some of your, your sample will have at least some sort of attraction or some sort of affinity for the mobile phase. The mobile and stationary phase. So the solid support is the stationary phase. So this solid support is in your uh, uh, column is your uh, stationary phase. And it's normally silica. It's normally silica. Uh, and the organic solvent is the mobile phase. Now, like with, um, like I said, with, with a, a polar, with, uh, sorry, like I said, with TLC, uh, compounds so oh, TLC compounds like I said with TLC or thin layer chromatography which I did in the previous video which I'll, I'll probably leave, leave a link in the description because I said quite a lot in that video uh, but the more apolar it's kind of the same principle here right the more apolar a substance is the more soluble it is in organic solvent i.e. the more polar a substance is the higher is affinity to the mobile phase and if in that case it has a higher affinity for the mobile phase, it has a low affinity for the station phase, and therefore they would interact more with the mobile phase. And if they and we know here that the mobile phase is used to uh move down the column. So if it if it if it has a strong affinity for the mobile phase, it will run more quickly. It will have so it have a, so if it has a, a higher affinity for the mobile phase than to the stationary phase, it will interact less to the stationary phase, and therefore and it will it will have a stronger interaction or stronger affinity for that mobile phase and it will move down the column more quickly. It will, it will run down the column more quickly. By the way, these compounds are falling down due to gravity. I just want to make that clear in case anybody wants to get why, why they're moving down. They're moving down by the mobile phase, yes. The mobile phase does allow it to move down, but it's by gravity as well. That's allowing it to obviously allow it to pull down. But one more thing you need to understand. So if it's a po if the more polar, the more apolar it is or the more non-polar it is, the higher its affinity for the mobile phase and since the mobile phase allows it to move more down, the more non-polar it is, the faster that it will move down the the, uh, the column and the lower its retention time. I.e. it takes less time for it to go down the entire column, so the retention time is much less. I.e. it will move faster down the, 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 the column. And vice versa, the more, the more polar, so yeah, that, they'll have a smaller retention time. And vice versa, if it has a more polar substance, are less soluble. So therefore, they'll have a higher affinity for the stationary phase and a lower affinity for the uh, mobile phase. And therefore, they will interact more with the stationary phase, they will interact more with the solid support. And therefore, they will uh, elute less quickly. Uh, so this is this here is called our eluate. And this is... When, what, Sorry, I'll, I'll kind of go back on that point there. I don't want to rush too quickly. I'm kind of rushing too quickly here. The more polar it is, uh, the higher affinity to, to, to the stationary phase and it's lower affinity to the uh, to the mobile phase. It will it'll interact more with the stationary phase. Uh, and, because of the, and because of that, it will move less quickly down the column because it, it's, it's, it's still so attracted to the stationary phase. It's so attracted... Uh, and has a high affinity for this station phase, it will elute less quickly and it'll move down the column less quickly and therefore have a higher retention time. Now, what I mean by elute, right? So our, el our eluent is this is when it comes, when we add our compound down here, our solvent down here, that is called eluent. When it, we get, when it passes out the tap here, right? When it passes out the tap here, we call that eluate. Uh, just, just that's 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 a small thing that you kind of need to know. So eluate, eluting, but just mentioning that once it's passing out, it's eluting out. So, elu or eluating out of the the, uh, the column. 
and that's what it is. That's how. And then once, once, by the way, once you've once the compound has, uh, elevated out of the column, we then stop the timer, and that's how we record our, uh, retention time. So experimental procedure. So below, it shows you a step by step process of the sep of separating substances, using column chromatography. So, here it is, as I kind of went through it before, adding our stationary adding our stationary phase in. Uh, then we add our, uh, sorry, glass beads should be, yeah, glass beads first, stage phase, then we add our sample, then we add our mobile phase. Now we can, we can continuously keep adding our mobile phase in throughout time if it gets replenished. That's the thing that this, this diagram here represents. Because more of a, I, I, this this one here hasn't got really, from what I can see here. They they're constantly replenishing their, uh, station phase because it gets to here. And it keeps, but this isn't what we need. What we need is this here when it elevates. You may need to do it with this uh like this though where you have to continuously keep replenishing it. I'm not so certain about this method because. Honestly, as I've done my exams right now, I haven't done many examples of column chromatography, uh, where they ask, create where they ask me to un fully understand about the method of column chromatography, uh, which maybe means it might it might come up. But really, honestly, ask your teacher first just to be certain. I don't want to spread anything that may not be true. But from what my experience, uh, they just want you to understand what it means, uh, and the basics of column chromatography. So, how it how it's put in really and um what it means if it passes down the column uh more more quickly or how it eludes uh the stage and the mobile phase and that's that's the basics of it here so from this from this here right so first of all you might see a slight meniscus and that's because of um the it, the the compound might have a slight attraction to the walls of container more than the middle here and that might, that might be the case so if you see a slight meniscus that's all it is this is a eluent mobile phase so eluent uh mobile phase and then our sample mixture is here sample mixture eloquent adding that in now if i had this question if they asked you here which 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 one which compound here out of yellow out of yellow pink and green these oh i should actually say yeah so out of yellow I'll, I'll, I'll probably have it here i'll oh, let me use the white out of red, yellow, and pink, right? I've kind of kind of gone over here too, and so I don't want to mess up. But which one is more polar, and why? Which one of these compounds? Actually, you know what? Which one of these compounds is the least polar, and why? Don't want to go for it. Yeah, yeah. So I'll pause the video now and explain to me in in order. Which one is the least the least polar? And I want you to explain your answer why. All right, so I assume you pause the video now, or maybe you haven't. Maybe you just stared at me and looked at me like some sort of a waste, man. So that I ain't pausing the video for you, man. Get a life. Maybe you have done that. I don't know. Probably. But if you have, uh, if you have decided to pause the video, um, you know, appreciate that one. But I explain why. So the. Obviously, the first answer, if you're talking about which one has, it's the least polar in order. One, two, three. Uh, and if you, in case you got that one wrong, I'll explain why. Uh, well, I, had to, I asked you just to explain why. The reason is because the, the this pink col uh, this pink compound here has elu eluated first. Eluated first, which means that it has a high affinity for the mobile phase and a low affinity for the stationary phase. And it's interacted less with the stationary phase and hence it has... It will move down the column more quickly, and has it will have the lowest and it clearly has the lowest retention time here, and hence it has it's the least polar. And then once you kind of go for two, you say, uh, it's the second least polar because it has it's, um, it has higher retention time than pink, but less than the red, which means that it has and you you kind of get an intermediate here of saying, um. It's it's just really in the middle of saying that it's it's um got high, it's got a relatively high higher affinity for the mobile phase 
uh, than the stationary phase and hence has moved down the column uh, more quickly than the red or in the red compound here. And hence, and this is because it's less polar and it has a lower low affinity for that stationary phase. And then obviously the, the most obvious one, to, the, the most obvious two are, are usually the, the most, the most extremes. So one and three. Three is the, is the, the, the most polar, or I should say, it's, it's not, it's not least polar. Uh, it's the most polar here or the least apolar. Yeah. The least apolar or the most polar because it has, uh, it's moving down the column the least, so it has. It's very, it must be very polar because it has a high. It must have a higher affinity for the stationary phase than it does for the, uh, then for the for the mobile phase. Hence, it's eluting much more slowly, and and hence will have the highest elution time. So highest highest retention time. Sorry, so this is the most polar here. Highest retention time, most polar here, strongest affinity for the stationary phase. And that's it really. Hopefully this video was helpful. Obviously you you, you collect your early weights here in the bottom. And in case in, in case you, if they ever ask you, right? That is, the, I, I hopefully I didn't confuse you. If I, if I confused you even more, let me know. But I was just trying to get through the, the very fundamentals and basics of this and just try to say it over and over again so you can fully understand what I was trying to say. Um... Yeah, if if we ever if we didn't if we still weren't uh, were uncertain about our, our substance, we've collected our early weight here. We have a pure compound. We have a pure, or as close to being pure. We've probably run this experiment many times. We have as close to having a pure collection of our of separate compounds, and then we can run experiments on these compounds here. Uh, to if you want to do a further experiment, um, chemical tests or physical, uh, tests instead, uh. But it's, so it's a good way of, of it's a good way of identifying if we can identify straight from retention time, uh, because there'll be a, there'll be an index or some sort of reference book where where it tells you the reference time for certain types of um, with so for certain types of, it tells you the specific retention time for a compound with a specific type of uh solvent that you've used and that could just easily match up. But if we're still if we're still uncertain, we can still do a chemical test with. Or another type of test with our compound here. So if they were to ask you to draw a diagram, make sure to have this here. Uh, we can always do more experiments with this compound to help us first separate. So this is a good way of separating our compound. Even if we didn't want to identify it, we can separate it. But if we want to identify it, it's also another way of identifying it. Hopefully this video was helpful. Uh, that's